In 2002, we started pioneering the virtual amp technology for guitar and bass with Amplitude. The product structure and the technology behind the modeling have been continuously improved during the years. And now, with Amplitude 5, we are offering our most organic and complete solution for the virtual guitar studio. On the graphical point of view, we remade everything. We reskinned uh, all the 400 gears and uh, we reorganized the GUI uh, in a new format. One of the main uh, features is the chain section where it is possible to drag and drop the gear in freedom. So we have a carousel on the right side of the GUI where it is possible to pick, uh, to drag and drop uh, the models directly in the chain. Uh, the chain sports uh, uh, four main modes. The first one is the single, uh, a single uh, path, a signal path. The second one is a parallel path, a double chain. And the third one, we introduced a new feature, which is the wet dry wet uh, configuration. Uh, in this mode, it is possible to, to load up to 57 gear models, which is a huge number for a, for a preset. And uh, it gives you a lot of opportunities. One of the most important feature in Amplitude 5 is the new cabinet section. Here we introduced a new technology which is called VIR, which means uh, Volumetric Impulse Response. With this technology, uh, we redid all the cabinets using an automation which allows us uh, to improve the resolution and the density of the impulse responses. As a result, the mic placement is now super smooth and offers a lifelike rendition of all possible positions, including the interaction between speakers and the interaction between the speaker and the floor. So for Amplitude 5, we wanted to put a special focus on the cabinet section, because the cabinet section is the one where most of the magic happened. Not most of the magic, okay, a lot of the magic happened. And not the cabinet itself um, on its own, but the cabinet and the way you mic it, of course you know that when you just move your microphone a um, tiny, tiny bit, the character of the sound is highly changing. So we wanted to, to give the user the same experience a uh, sound engineer can find when he's in front of the cabinet, moving the microphone around, and, and you, you can hear all this sound, very, the subtleties of the sound changing. And this is what we wanted to achieve. And so to do that, we developed uh, an automated method because we wanted to have a very high re resolution. So uh, um, to measure a lot of points, a lot of impulse responses, much more than we used to do in the previous versions of Amplitude. This, is, this seems to be a simple solution to, to achieve a higher resolution, but a very higher, a much higher resolution needs a lot of time and this is very difficult to, to apply actually in practice because... You're talking about resolution in terms of number of points in space, right? Yes, yes, right, right. Okay. But the density of the, the, the grid, let's say, that's the, that you measure in front of the cabinet. So the, all the positions where you put the microphone. Hmm. And so the denser it is, the more realistic it is, of course you have more points and it's closer to what happens in the real thing. So we did a lot of experiments and we, we found out that the number of impulse responses we wanted is pretty high actually. It is, it is a lot of, <laughs> of measurements and so um, this would take a very long time for each cabinet and as you know in Amplitude we, I think we have above 100 cabinets. More than 100, yeah. And we want to do that for many speakers on the same cabinet, the different because each speaker has its own sound character because of the interaction with the floor, with the neighboring speakers. And so this, this is, a, you, you can understand that the number of measurements becomes to be extremely high. And, it's, and going be, to be, it's going to be crazy, yes. Yes, if you, yes. If you do it manually. Yes, I think someone yeah. could die doing that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so, uh, yes, I add to that that we wanted to, uh, to do the recording for, with different microphones, the number explodes again. 
So what we, want, what we did is we automated the, the recording. We used a automated solution which allows for the microphone to, to be moved on along two axes, like this one. A one axis is to, uh, away or close to the speaker and the other axis is uh, lateral motion. And so uh, we, we used this, uh, this solution, but we highly extended it with, yeah. uh, uh, for our own needs. It has Be been greatly modified. Yes. Actually. Yes. We have added a lot of special attachment to it so that we can easily mount the microphone we want to use. And we, we so, so the ease of uh, the switch of microphone is an important thing if you want to have a lot of recordings with different microphones. Mostly the importance of the, of the attachment we did is that the, all the microphones we use are aligned. The capsule of, the, of each microphone is in the same position each time we mount a new microphone. So you have an absolute time accuracy. Yes. On all the recordings. Yes, and a total consistency between, between microphones. So this is how we automated the mechanical part of the project. And this allowed us to make recordings and measurements in, in a fraction of the time we would have needed if we had done this by hand, of course. And yes, the, the overall recording took like um, a few months instead of, I guess, many years or something like that, something very long. Uh, how many pulse responses do we have in total in Amplitude 5? I think the, the total amounts to 140,000 yeah. impulse, impulse responses or something like that. For example, okay. a, a 4x12 cab has something like 2,400 uh, measurements. So you can see that that's a lot. It's a lot. So with this method, we could take into account the cabinet and the microphone position, which is a very important part of the, of the sound, of course. But that's not all, because even the, the place where you are located when you are recording is very important to the sound too. And maybe Davide can tell us more about this. Yes. This room that you are looking at now is a room that has been especially uh, designed to uh, be a special place for guitar amplifiers. Uh, why? Because it's a, a room that has a variable acoustics, and so we were able to place each amplifier in the sweet spot, uh, depending on the way the amplifier was sounding, the character the amplifier had, the type of cabinet, if, if it was a single speaker, and so it was maybe, uh, it was needed to be raised a bit from the floor, or if it was a 4 by 12 like this one, that it's perfectly at, uh, uh, at its natural position on the floor. So, uh, as exactly because the room is taking a big role on the sound of the recorded cabinet, uh, all the amplifiers in Amplitude 5, all the cabinets, has been recorded in this exact room, uh, all of them. Uh, but not all of them in the same position. So uh, we think this helped a lot into uh, getting that very, very focused and precise tone each amplifier has, and, it, and, and especially very, very similar to what you would expect from that particular amplifier. So now we have millions of impulse responses. And so what? What do you do with them? Well. We had to develop a software engine that's, uh, that's able to cope with all these things and put them together uh, to be able to, to offer the user this seamless experience of the, the, the moving microphone in front of the cab. And what you get in the end is a very truthful tool, let's say, that gives you even the interaction with the, between the different speakers, like they are for real, and yes. So if you put a microphone toward the right of the top left speakers, speaker, sorry, is going to sounding different than if you put it toward the left side of that speaker. Indeed, yes, uh, okay. because the the inner side, let's say the the side of the speaker that's yeah. 
tell what the other speaker has more I I influence from the nearby speaker. And so it will sound, uh, uh, sometimes it sounds totally different because of the interaction between them. Because uh, you have some face cancellation, things like that. So they, they, Yes. And this is going to be different depending on the microphone you use. Yes, because of the, the, the microphone has, uh, microphones have different polar pat patterns. And, uh, and also they have a um, different uh, proximity effect. Yeah. And all this truthful interaction and so on, you get in Amplitude 5 now. So we talked about all the interactions of the cab with the mic and so on. And this is a lot, and this is not enough. There is also the interaction with the amplifier, as Davide may tell you now. Yes, let's say that uh, if you take the cabinet alone, uh, it's going to have its own sound uh, if it's driven by, let's call it an ideal power amplifier. And then if you take the power amplifier that you have within your amp alone, without connecting it to a real speaker, then what you are going to have, you have a signal that it's amplified, it has a certain sound, but it's not the sound that this amplifier is going to provide when it is connected to a real speaker. It means that the two uh, systems, the loudspeaker, the electromechanical loudspeaker that has a moving membrane, uh, is going to affect the way the power amplifier is going to put out its electrical signal. And one is influencing the other and vice versa. Uh, this is going to be more evident when the amplifier is pushed toward its limits, when it's starting to break up. And of course, for these reasons, this is more noticeable with smaller amplifiers than with bigger amplifiers. But at any level, anyway, this is a phenomenon is going to happen inside the amp. So uh, we have a very complex engine uh, that it's continuously uh, having the two things interacting together. And this is why Amplitude 5 has this very, I would say, complex texture in the sound when the amplifier is overdriven. Uh, because you have the two things that are reacting, I would say, almost randomly, depending on what is happening on the other side. And uh, this is a quite important factor, we think. And this is totally dependent on the program you're playing. On the, yes, so on, on the material. You feel it under your fingers. Yes, also because, for example, when the speaker uh, is close to its resonant frequency, then it's going to interfere with the power amplifier much more than when it's far from its, its, its resonance. And so depending on the note you play and the frequencies that you are feeding to the amplifier, this interaction is going to be different. So it's going to react different to different music. And this is the technology that we call DIM, which stands for Dynamic Interaction Modeling. Another reason why we are continuously uh, pushing on the research to improve the technology behind the system uh, is that we are working with the top brands uh, in the industry and, and the top artists as well in the industry. Right, and uh, I would like to add to that that our collaboration with different art artists is very important too in this in this matter. For example, um, we had this uh, collaboration with uh, Joseph Triani and Brian May recently, and beside being uh, incredible guitar players, they have they developed a very a very peculiar sensitive approach to the guitar, and they are looking for something their own in the sound that not everybody is aware of. And so meeting these persons um, uh, shed some light to some place where you, wouldn't, you would never look otherwise, actually. And we learn a lot from that. And uh, some of them are more technical, some of them mm. are totally not technical. And so we have many kind of different um, inputs from them. And for example, um, when we worked with, uh, with Brian May, you know that his uh, very special um, amp, the Dickey amp uh, that John Deacon the, built for him. The small one. Yes, a long time ago. Uh, it's, uh, this, for example, required this 
special work and rework because we couldn't really match his sound. Although this is something that looks like it should should be easy because it's a small a small amp, but actually it's totally different from anything else we've we've done before. So it's been uh, it took us a very long time to develop and. Maybe I can tell you something else about our collaboration with Giuseppe Triani, who, when hearing our model of uh, his Marshall amp, his signature amp, he guessed we had the capacitors on the power supply wrong, wrongly sized. So he guessed actually the, the real value of the comp components we had modeled. And that's, I think that's very humbling. It means he knows his sound. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was a great catch. In fact, all these experiences uh, combined together uh, is what makes Amplitude at the level it is today. And we really think it's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> right. <laughs>